I have been joined by Eric Edem Abanya, who is the Deputy National Youth Organizer of the NDC. Good morning, Eric. Good morning, How are Jifa. you? Great. Great to see you Good again. Good to see you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that is not awkward at all. <laughs> and <laughs> Nana Kwame Asafo Eje, we'll just pretend you didn't see him. No, <laughs> Who's an administrator of the NPP Youth Wing. Good morning, Nana morning, Kwame. Nadia. How are you? How are you? I'm fine. Good. I'm good. Thank you so much for being here. This is your first time here. You've been here. Oh, sure, of course. Ah, okay. And I must commend you guys are doing a great job. I mean, Thank I'm you. impressed with the things I'm seeing here. Thank you very much. I mean, you're highly commendable. Thank you. Now we'll go on to our first uh, story here. I'm reading from citynewsroom.com and it says, current charges against instability plotters may change. That's coming from Benka. And uh, I'm going to read briefly. Deputy Attorney General Joseph Benka has said his department has no hand in leveling charges against the three suspects arrested for plotting to destabilize the country. According to him, the police service was responsible for leveling the charges against the suspects. I'm going to quote him briefly. He says, let me make it clear that the charges that have been preferred are preliminary charges by the police and not the attorney general. The police can arrest and investigations have come to the conclusion that the charges are maintainable for now. Remember that when they get all their documents ready to enable a prosecution, they gather all their documents, a duplicate docket will be forwarded to the Office of the Attorney General. It is at that point that we will review the, dupli the duplicate docket with all the content and come to a professional determination as to what are the appropriate charges. The charges were preferred by the investigative team based on the facts available to the police. So he was on Eyewitness News. And he said this. Nanaya, let me start with you on Nana this Kwame. one. Nana Kwame, I'm sure. sorry. Nana Kwame, let me start with you on this one. Um, shouldn't the Attorney General had been handling this case from the very beginning, instead of the police handling it, the public being aware of it, and now we're being informed that the Attorney General doesn't even have the docket yet? Thank you. Let me first and foremost say a very good morning to your viewers, and then mm -hmm. particularly to so my brother and colleague, uh, Adam, and yourself. Um, I am not a lawyer, particularly so when there are uh, restrictions to qualify to the law schools and all that. I don't think I would even qualify to go I'm there. I'm sure if you applied, you yes. would. Yes. Um, so I will not speak as though I am one. But you see, um, there are some realities of, of the issues. And this is not something new, or to say that it's a novelty that is happening in our space. Mm -hmm. We've seen charges that the um, the attorney general have to study the case as it is and then come out with charges appropriate to that effect. Uh, let us also not say that the attorney general, and it's clear, Ben can make a, f a very clear statement that at this point, it is the, uh, the police that is handling the case. They are yet to put together all the documents mm -hmm. and then su submit it to the attorney general's office. Then they would study it and come out with appropriate charges. Now, to say to that effect, I mean, I am a bit surprised to be hearing from other courtesies downplaying this whole discussion of um, instability in the country, attempted coup to say or to, to, to mention or to name it as such. Is it an attempted um, coup? Well, I, I am not a security expert. But okay. if the security expert are tagging and calling it as such, who am I to say it's not? Okay. Again, if, if, if you are in a country that a documentary by a journalist, an astute journalist, I want to call him mm -hmm. like that, uh, militia in the eyes of, uh, in the heart of the city, where we see young men at the parade being addressed by another young man supposed to be called their commander without a pen, without a stick, without anything. And those people are capable, competent, of course, causing security instability in this country. And we arrest another group of people who have expertise, who have a technical know-how to do grenades, have guns, and you think those ones cannot kill a fly, then for me, it is obvious we are not discussing these issues fairly. And there's double standards and pick and choosing partisan politics is playing. But for me, I think that I will commend the, the, the security agencies for doing a yeoman's job because I know, and it is clear, there are lots of things that have happened in this country, particularly so this world, that do not necessarily, necessarily have to have a whole armory 
to lead those charges they did and cause pain to countries in this world. So for me, and again, I, I have heard from very reliable sources that there are more to this issue, and particularly so when the Attorney General, when the police put together the documents and the Attorney General studies the case well, we would have an, a good appreciation of what it is, how this, mm -hmm. how this, 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 Evil-minded people were planning to plunge the state into into into, I mean, I mean, a chaotic state or whatever we want to call it. But to see, the point I'm making here is clear, that the procedure is not so different from what has been happening. The police will do their interrogation, they will do their investigation, they will delve down into the issues, put together the fact as it is. Then the attorney general will take up. And okay. make so, some very good determination of the uh, case. We will not like. I personally will not like a situation where the attorney general would now come out with charges. They go to court. They want to amend the charges. But why would they be back. arrested if uh, we are not ready to prosecute? Uh, but them? when you've been investigating when them for the past when you're fifteen possessing months, right? A gun. When the, the investigations have been going on for fifteen months. No. So isn't see, there a way the attorney see, general could have received let, everything? Let, let, to us get clear, the let us be clear with the security terms prosecute. and words mm -hmm. clearly. Mm -hmm. that, like I've said clearly, I do not have enough respect. Mm -hmm. But you see. When they say I have been monitoring and investigating mm -hmm. somebody mm -hmm. who has a plan and attempt to do something, it does not necessarily mean that when you when you arrest that fellow, you just move to court. Mm. No. Okay. Even when you see people mm -hmm. pulling out gun, mm -hmm. shooting the other, you still do an investigation even after seeing them in the act. But like two minutes ago, you just called them wicked people. So they are being trialed of, of, by the see, general of public. Of course, you see, that's why I'm saying that. That's, 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 why, that's why I'm guilty. saying that. You so why cannot, would the police yeah, go in and arrest that. them publicly you, you cannot, when the attorney general does not have the documents to continue that. the prosecution? You cannot hold a gun mm -hmm. when you are not authorized. Mm -hmm. That is even an offense. Yeah. You cannot be manufacturing grenade in a country when you don't have the license to do so. But all these are allegations, aren't they? That is why I'm saying that investigation, they will put together the fact as it is and hand it over to the Attorney General. And, and I'm Department. saying, do you and think it was right that. for us to do this whole public arrest, um, bring out a press release that they are causing instability in the country when the Attorney General doesn't even have the docket to see, prosecute you see, them? You see, the, 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 security, the security agency, uh -huh. the security agency, I don't think we want to say they are bereft of what they are doing or ideas or knowledge or, I mean, their technical area. Mm -hmm. No. I mean, the statement, even though it was coming from the Minister of State, mm -hmm. but it's a security document. And I believe so that there was a, a, a total, uh, what do you call it, comprehensive discussion between the security as to what should need to be done. The public needs to understand and know what is going on. You cannot just arrest somebody of this nature and decide to keep quiet and not let the good people of Ghana know about know about it. Shouldn't some urgency be applied to prosecuting them and, and not just arresting and, and them? And who said urgency is not being applied? Shouldn't the attorney general have had a docket by now? But, if we have but, gone in but, to arrest but, them already. But is there is there any breach as in any I mean timelines that have been breached? No, I'm just saying crime. the nature of the crime. We're saying that it these da, men yes. are, what is important are being for me, alleged to for cause me, instability for me in as the a citizen, For me as a citizen, what is important is that the, those people mm -hmm. have been curtailed, have been tamed, have been arrested. The citizens the, the, who are being yeah, accused of yes, a crime yes, that is yes, yet to be yes, defended yes, in court. Yes, yes. I mean, it, of course, it's yet to be defended in court. Have been arrested. Mm -hmm. Whatever they are planning or doing, allegedly, mm -hmm. have been stopped. Okay. So I have a sound mind. I live in a country where I believe that I'm strongly secured, and this act is even proving and confirming that I am safe in my country. That is enough. Now, let us study the document. Let the agencies do what they are supposed to do, and then proceed to the next stage. For me as a citizen, what yeah, interests me is that so supposedly plan attempted uh, 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 destabilizers of the country has been arrested and curtailed. Okay. I am safe. Okay, thank you. Adam, do you equally Japan. feel safe that we've, we've arrested the alleged you know, instability plotters? Jafar, good morning to you and to our cherished viewers across uh, the world. Um, a friend just sent me a message from Canada he, that he's streaming live and he's watching us. Uh, it's been a while I've, I, I came to your platform and I'm very happy to be here this morning. Right after here, we'll be joining the former president, John Dramani Mahama, at Kolebu. Okay. He will be speaking to the National Association of Health Science students okay. in Kolebu this morning at 10 a.m. So 
I'll be joining him from here. Okay. Jifa, on this issue of an alleged coup plotters. Well, instability uh, and, and, plotters. And, I mean, I think that we just, we just, it's just about the semantics <laughs> and, and, and all of that. Uh, and the arrest and being taken to court and the deputy attorney general is now telling us that the AG's department is yet to uh, advise or steady the docket and give their recommendations. The inconsistencies and everything in the whole story points to the fact that, one, we have a very, very confused government. What exactly is that, inconsistent yes, about the Yes, yes, I'll, I'll give you, I'll point out the inconsistencies in the, in the story and the, the, the whole issue surrounding this issue. We have a very, very, very confused government that is so insensitive that in their attempt to divert attention from issues affecting the government, they could play with even security issues. Okay. The Minister for Information is a cabinet minister. The Minister for Information speaks for the government, he speaks for cabinet, he speaks for the president. When you have the Minister for Information releasing a statement in which he stated categorically that some three individuals have been arrested after 18 months of monitoring. The second paragraph of his statement, he stated that these gentlemen were arrested on the grounds that they had an elaborate plan or plot targeted at the presidency. Any attack on the presidency to cause instability is a coup. So what is the semantics about it is the NDC people and other people who are now finding the words? When the statement, number paragraph two, of the information minister statement stated categorically that these gentlemen were arrested because they had an elaborate plot targeted at the presidency. Now, when you have such a statement coming from a cabinet minister and somebody who speaks for the government, then all of a sudden, days after... The gentlemen who have been arrested were taken to court and the charge sheet has to do with conspiracy to uh, manufacture arms and all of that. It tells you that it, the statement from the Minister for Information came on the back of malice. Hmm. Now let me tell you how the criminal proceedings of this country works. When you have the CID conducting an investigation into a specific issue as, as this, even though the CID will prepare the docket from the beginning, what will happen is that they first must establish a basic threshold, what the lawyers call a prima facie case, mm -hmm. before they can even go to court. So if the statement from the Minister for Information points to the fact that there's a serious crime as treason or high treason that these gentlemen have been involved in, and that is where they were directing the communication to, and yet you go to court and these gentlemen were charged only for conspiracy to uh, manufacture illegal arms and all of that. I mean, some local blacksmiths have been arrested. We are not saying that... Oh, that's by the police. That, that, that is by the police. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying that what kind of briefing mm -hmm. did the minister or the cabinet receive before the statement came out? Especially when the minister stated in the statement that they have been briefed by the police. Oh, how come the briefing to cabinet... Is different from the kind of charge sheet that has been prepared. Mm. And let's not, let's not pretend. We all know that when you are in court, you can always amend your charges. I mean, the Attorney General can do that. But when you have the statement preceding the going to court or filing of the case in court, the statement makes some, I mean, reference to a specific crime as serious as high treason, as serious as an attempt to cause instability in this country, one would have expected that by now in court, those are the issues that should be on the table before the judges. So why would the presidency or the government statement point to a different crime? The police, the CID who conducted the investigation also have something else going on. And today the attorney general is telling us that they are yet to even study the, doc the docket. What kind of legal briefing did even the Minister for Information receive before putting out that statement? Is there anything wrong with the police? There is, 
Is charging this, them first because no, really no, they were arrested no. on, on Friday. Monday was a holiday. So, the so this is this, were this on, is the, on this Tuesday is this is the point. And today is Thursday. This so is the it's, point. It's not really. It, you say no. Wrong with there, that, there's a lot of things wrong here. Here in the statement, mm -hmm. you tell us that these gentlemen were monitored for 18 months. 15 months. 15 months. Sorry, 15 months. Mm -hmm. So you were you put these gentlemen under strict monitoring for 15 months. Yes. And that at every point, what you should know is that. Almost on a weekly basis, mm -hmm. the presidency, the government cabinet received security briefing from the security architecture. Mm -hmm. So for these 15 months, they were receiving briefing. Mm -hmm. After the whole thing, when they were arrested, the minister for information was not under any compulsion to put out a statement. But he has, was to, he at he has to inform to do it? the general public so about the security inform, of the nation. It is important if someone is that, threatening to cause instability in the country, the citizens of Ghana deserve to know. So Don't if, you agree? If, if I agree. I, know, I mean, the citizens of Ghana have the right to know what is going on with security. So why will the statement mm -hmm. point to something, a crime, as serious as high treason, and yet the police are on a different direction with the kind of charges that they have preferred against But the, the Attorney General will handle these charges once the docket Even has been Even before the them. Minister for Information comes out, he should have received some legal briefing. Okay. And who gives him the legal briefing? Mm -hmm. It is the Attorney General's department. So the, this whole thing, for me, mm -hmm. it, it is clearly a PR gimmick gone bad. The government under pressure, wanting to cut some public sympathy, divert attention, decided to play with a serious issue as security. You don't believe that these apart three men that, and the military people Apart from that, I am not in the position. I am not in the... No, the court will determine that. And in fact, it is only the court that mm -hmm. can actually even determine whether what they were planning to do amounts to... to instability. To a coup instability, coup or an attempt targeted at the presidency. However, why was the... Information minister statement make those categorical statements. Don't you know that it can even preempt the kind of judgment that will come from the judiciary, especially when the minister for information speaks for the president, Which speaks for kind the government. Of statement exactly are you referring Spare to? The statement that he issued on what, what in his statement in the statement point to relate to, to point a judgment. Two. Go to point two. Okay, point two says the joint operation was to neutralize and an elaborate plot targeted at the presidency and with the ultimate aim of destabilizing the country. The arrest and seizure come after 15 months of surveillance and gathering of evidence. Is that not a definite statement? No, it's that, just, it's just so the result plot. of their investigations. No, no, no. See, and, um, you, no, you can they read it again. They investigated it and, sure and they found that, what is going on. He said to, 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 to foil what? Mm -hmm. The ultimate aim. Mm -hmm. Of destabilizing, meaning that you have even established the intention of the gentleman even the, the before aim, he investigates. The aim, right? So they are, they are thinking that's their aim isn't based the, on the investigations the they've done. Based on the investigation, yes. So the that, lawyers that will the debate. Aim. So if, if, if that based was their on the investigation after 15 months, mm -hmm. why are you charging them for something else in court? Okay. Let me tell you something, Jifa. In this country, there are about three million Ghanaians who have access to illegal arms. Mm -hmm. So in, when you, you, you are in possession of an illegal arm, 3 million Ghanaians, mm -hmm. does that constitute that 3 million Ghanaians are planning or plotting to overthrow the government? Or all that? You created panic with this statement. Three, it was three, clearly with, an over-exaggeration. Like 3 million that Ghanaians don't even, have access to NATO rounds. No, they don't have access to uh, AK-47 rounds. They don't have access to five locally manufactured display. pistols. Even that's, bread knife, that's, that's all bread knife what does it take to, to cause thing. instability in the country? And if, then, I, if I want you to understand the security architecture of our country, mm -hmm. I'm telling you that if even the items that are on display, as they are, they are alleging that belongs to the gents, because I have heard the lawyers for the accused denying that those weapons doesn't belong to mm -hmm. uh, his clients. But if, assuming without admitting that those weapons even belong to them. Okay. My dear, even when you are a student in mm -hmm. uniform, you are going to do anything close to the Flagstaff House, the checkpoint that you would even pass through before you get there, these things don't... Look, in 2015, in Kumasi, people were arrested with even more sophisticated weapons, weaponry. The government didn't issue a statement claiming that these people wanted to bring the government that this is clearly a PR gimmick. They wanted to cut public attention and sympathy and it has gone bad. I think that Ghanaians are descending. And that is why when you follow the media discussions and social media, Ghanaians even turn it into a very 
very uh, humorous activity by and challenging and so we cool people even using their makeup kits to say that these are the items that they are going to use to perform cool. I can tell you an authority, Jifa. Ghanaians have come to accept the democracy that we are practicing. We're not there yet, but I can assure you that Ghanaians know exactly how to overthrow a government. And come 7 December 2020, they know how to take out this confused government. It will not be by the use of weapons and all of that. They are going to vote them if out I, at the um, poll. Thank you. Exactly we do have we'll to do. go for a quick break, and then Anna Kwame will have a chance at responding. Okay. Is that okay? Uh, thank you for staying with us. And of course, if you have any questions or contributions to the conversation, we want to hear from you. So easily hashtag Breakfast Daily and the WhatsApp line 0550 for us to hear what you're thinking. We'll be right back. Welcome back. This is Breakfast Daily on CCTV. Thank you so much for staying with us. I still have Adem with me and Nana Kwame as well. But you have sent in some messages, so I'll read them briefly, and then Nana Kwame will respond to what Adam had to say about um, the three suspects who were arrested for allegedly causing instability, trying to cause instability to the country. Um, so let me see here. Amponsa Dako Frank says, the rage and anger that just popped up in me after seeing disgusting scenes from Kachikope shows the level of wickedness and irresponsibility on the part on the part of our leaders. This is a real national security threat and not that cool they are talking about. Okay, thank you very much. And this has to do with the, the, the video uh, we showed of the people of Kaki, Kachikope drinking very dirty water that isn't even suitable for animals. Uh, CCTV, good morning. NPP should give us a break on their, okay, on their incompetent government. The same NPP arrested people from the voter region and what is the end of it all? And the number of arms taken from people. Okay, clearly you are all for NDC. But Nana Kwame. Thank you. Um, at a point I was about commending Edem for the kind of, yeah, for the kind of argument he was okay. putting out. My only problem had to do with his own conclusion in the mind of, about what inconsistency is. Mm. And the commendation I was giving him was that he did not join the back wagon to do the ridiculing of the whole event. Mm. But at the latter point, he joined them, and I noticed that, no, no, I mean... Keep your but government. he still has um, every I mean, right I mean, to I mean, critique, I mean, I mean, let me let me let me come back. Okay. You see, I was about commending him for the fact that if you say mm -hmm. or we say mm -hmm. that militia in the heart of the city mm. is a dangerous, serious, and DC had to hold press conference, talk about this thing, and make it look as if the country is ungovernable, mm. then ridiculing this one depict exposes the clear hypocrisy. Can you really compare the young men no, featured in no, that documentary no, to this yes. old doctor and his Look, friend? The young men featuring in that document uh -huh. do not even amount to a Presbyterian brigade. Really? A Presbyterian brigade. Ah, you saw ladies in high heels standing well dressed. You saw men in tie and you call them militia in the heart of the city and you find NDC making a whole lot of issue, security issue about this one. Okay. And now you find AK-47, you find grenade, you see weapons and you are telling me that those were, and he was mentioning knife and spoon and makeups. Well, isn't, if this is not hypocrisy, okay, but then isn't this I am the exact shocked same and surprised. reason why we should speed Different, up the I... process of prosecuting oh, oh, is it, alleged it, I'll, I'll come there. Um, instability I'll, I'll, I'll plotters come as I'll opposed to I'll finding them with I'll carrying come there. arms? I'll I mean, the charges are very small so compared let, to the I'll crime they are being I'm, accused of committing. You see, as to small or high charges, eh? it is not about the charge that is interesting. They are causing a threat to the entire nation of almost 30 million people. Kennedy, Japan, eh? Kennedy, Japan, hold on. I mean, if you could let me speak. Yeah, but I want you to answer my question as well. Okay. These are men who are being accused of causing an instability to the entire country of almost 30 million okay. people. And the attorney, Deputy Attorney General is saying, okay. we don't have the docket to prosecute them yet. Okay. Is that enough? Okay. Should we feel safe? Can I speak Yes, now? please. Thank you. Now, I am saying that we had Kennedy in Japan hmm, who made a radio utterance. They charged him for treason. Hmm? 
-hmm. They charged him for treason and took him to court. What happened to Respectfully, that Respectfully, I'm not comparing what no, NDC no, did. No, no, I'm, I'm asking I am a building a point to answer your question. I'm building mm -hmm. a point. So if so, my point here mm -hmm. is that look, it is not how early, how quick you are to put out the charges. So why are we quick to put out a statement? Because you have to know. Because the people were not arrested in 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 a certain bedroom. They were arrested in public. People saw the arrest. You need to tell the people why these people have been arrested, so that tomorrow they don't come and put another case. These people were arrested in the public. So you need to let Ghanaians know they have been arrested and why they were arrested. Okay. Again, you're talking about procedure, charges. Mm -hmm. ah, has somebody, in any case, breached any procedural uh, 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 requirement? No. no. So what are we talking about? For me, I would prefer a government who will not go rush, or I would prefer a system who will not go rush to the court and, uh, and, and charge people for treason and come back and later realize that, no, I would, I would rather want a government who will study the case and have a good case to put out there. Okay. The whole, the whole, the mere fact that you got, you come out with a statement, mm -hmm. hmm, that's not necessarily means that you would, you would, you would, you would have such charges in court. Okay. Because look, so the, this, it could be a possibility that they won't even be charged they, with uh, listen, causing instability. Listen, I, 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 I just told you here. I just told you here. I just told you here that I, I have, I have heard from a very reliable source. Mm -hmm. that there is more to this issue we are discussing. That's speculation. And I you believe strongly, that. I believe strongly that, mm -hmm. you see, people were arrested Friday. Mm -hmm. You are here sitting here uh, Thursday. Seriously want to see a charge and all that and all that. Because there are people who threaten yes. instability yes. Yes. against yes. the and country. And, and, and I'm telling you and that. That's a I'm very that. serious offense. As, as a Ghanaian, eh? as a Ghanaian, my interest is that I am safe. I am being made to grieve and know that I'm safe. And I How? feel so. How? So because we arrested yeah, no, yeah. a doctor and his yeah, friend. You see, you see, because if... We if, don't even know if, the military if, men involved in this crime. Uh, but the, I'm telling you that the document, the information, the fact as it is, will be submitted. Okay. And but this would be fact, made public. Fact, okay, okay, thank so, you. So, so this you argument of... Let us, this wrap up, this argument of let us rush and okay. go and put a case and put in a case here. And this is... I mean, that's one. And for me, it's not here and there. Okay, thank you very much. We have to move on to our Defa, next Defa, topic just, here. Just, just briefly, and then you can... Just a second. Defa, do you know how many people are arrested daily for various crimes? Mm -hmm. Some even more serious than what happened with regards to these three individuals? Mm -hmm. Does the Minister for Information put out a statement daily on this arrest? No. no. Again, I'm saying that the Minister for Information, I am told, is a lawyer. Mm -hmm. What well, you he read is the a statement? Lawyer. I'm told. I, I don't know. He, that is, a he is a lawyer. He's mm -hmm. a lawyer. I pointed out to just paragraph two. Mm -hmm. He didn't use the word uh, alleged. Mm -hmm. He made pronouncement, definite pronouncement on the activities of this gentleman. So are you not surprised that you go to court and now the attorney general tells us that they don't even have the dockets? It is out of malice. It was meant to cut some public attention and divert us. And I think that... Well, the question is, what, what, where are they diverting they, attention from? No, from a whole lot of from issues. What? The Tardy Girls issue is How one issue. I mean, no, I mean, but, I mean, no, you see, every you see, you see the point. No, we all know you how the, the government point. has how handled they poor attention? security in this country. So I mean, we put out this cork and boo so story to create an attempt. Yes, because that is what they have done. I mean, that's how petty the NDC can be. Okay, so we are clear for me. That's how petty the NDC can be. That's not my opinion. For me, it's clear. The government is so petty that they can play with security issues. Current charges against... Okay, uh, so but you were charging people treason in this country. Enusa Fuseli demands sweeping reforms to reduce mass failure at Ghana Law School. I'm reading from citynewsroom.com, and this has to do with thousands of Ghanaians applying to law school and very little of them, about 7% of them passing the law school entrance exam. So member of parliament for Tamale Central, Enusa Fuseni, wants the Ghana School of Law to be stripped of the autonomy it currently has on passing students to become professional lawyers. According to him, such a reform will address the annual record of mass failures in the school entrance exam. Every year, more than a thousand students, most of whom are graduates from law faculties of various universities, write exams for an opportunity to study at the Ghana School of Law before becoming lawyers. But the results of the entrance exam show mass failures with only 7% passing in 2019. So I'm going to quote the Member of Parliament briefly, and then I'll get your thoughts on this issue. 
when you have only one venue for the purpose of training and that same venue is there for regulating the standards and admission that constitutes an entry barrier to the profession. Ghana Law School, Ghana School of Law need not exist as a regulator and a provider of service. The General Legal Council, which has a supervisory jurisdiction over the Ghana Law School, ought to remain a regulator and hive off Ghana, law, Ghana School of Law from its jurisdiction so that it becomes a player in the field like all other players. And the University of Ghana, for instance, can start the training of lawyers from the very first year a person enters the law faculty until the person is qualified to write the prescribed professional examination to become a lawyer. If this is done, the whole system of only 7% passing in examination written by 1,280 students will no longer exist. Nana Kwame, your thoughts on this issue of separating the people who will be in charge of who gets into law school from those who are also in charge of, of the bar exams. Okay, I think um, this whole legal entrance exam has generated some kind of heat, kind of uproar, kind of discomfort in this country. I must also admit that um, it has been reoccurring and the discussion comes anytime the exams and the results comes out. And after some few time, it dies off. Well, but seven percent is quite shocking. No, no, I will go there. I know, and it comes back. It's like we are having an annual ritual, mm. which we we'll continue to discuss every year. Okay. When we did last year, I had a discussion on this one. When the last but year that was for came. the bar, right? Yeah, hold on. When the last year result came, I mean, I'm putting the whole issue of this legal and trans lawyer becoming together mm -hmm. to discuss it. This year, we are discussing this one. I, I am. I am tempted to believe that next year we would still look at some of these issues. So how do we comes. find an, a solution so that we don't discuss this come next year? Because these are citizens of this country wanting to be lawyers and struggling to, to even embark on the journey. I think if you allow me, like, yes, I, I mean, these questions, I will deal with them very okay. well for you. Thank you. Um, it, comes, it brings some questions to mind. Is it that the students are not fit for purpose, they write, and they are not good to pass? Mm -hmm. Or is it that the lecturers or the teachers are not teaching what they are supposed to teach or they are not performing their duties well? Or is it that there is a kind of certain restrictions that have been put in, in place to automatically, technically, or for want of a better word, reduce, manage the intake into the school? Which this this question think? this questions come up. I mean, I mean, I'm not to think. I mean, these are the questions that is running through my mind. Mm -hmm. Again, there is another aspect which um, um, Inusa Fuseni raised: mm -hmm. the autonomy of the legal council. Mm -hmm. And some argument has also come up that you cannot have the the, the referee playing at the same time. Yeah. So that argument has also come. What up. do you think about that? I, I am coming. I, I, I'm coming. I think that. You see, for a want of a better word, is there a, is there a possibility to separate this whole two? So you agree with him? Yes, I do. I do agree, and I was going to come there. You see, there are a lot of schools, and I was he hearing or listening to Bernard mm -hmm. mentioning them. Mm -hmm. Legon, mm -hmm. they train law students. Mm -hmm. KNUST, they train law yeah. students. Gimpa, UCC, UPSC, where, I mean, um, Central University. We have Montcrest. They mm -hmm. all train... Uh, and what do you student. call it, law students. Now the question is that if there is a justification to say that Makola cannot absorb all of them, for that matter, we are trying to reduce the number, technically or overtly or covertly reduce the number, then we should, I mean, set a standard exams for all of them and, and empower the various institutions that do those trainings to administer the exam. Then the legal council becomes the regulator over these schools so that we can have the number. I mean, you see, when you look at the, the question comes up, we have 7,000 population to one lawyer in this country when you look at the ratio. And for me, I think it is serious. I don't know how, because I've listened to some other lawyers, senior lawyers, who are also vehemently gagging against the profession, mm -hmm. making sure that, look, we do not have a qualification of lawyers in the country, for the want of a better word. I mean, lawyers, it, it's a sacrosanct issue, and then there should be a certain aura 
around lawyers. So they need to ensure that they regulate who becomes a lawyer or who do not become a lawyer. And when you do that, it gives room to a lot of vices. Mm -hmm. Corruption there. Is this regulation based on merit or what else? I, I am not in a position to, to speak, but I am anticipating and saying that, look, when you begin doing this, this mm -hmm. is what you cause. Now you give a lot of people the opportunity to start thinking that, no, there is some certain corruption or some deeds going on there. Okay. There's some form of nepotism, some sort of favoritism. If you don't know anybody there, then it means you cannot enter. You give public the room to think like that. And for me, it is not healthy. Hmm. So, I mean... What solution would you recommend? I think that we have gotten to that stage where the legal profession should be treated like the medical profession. The doc I mean, we should give the various institutions who are doing or training these guys the, the, the license, the opportunity to do the professional course as well. Okay. So that we would have the standard set by the legal council mm -hmm. and regulated through the various institutions to ensure that you can, you can have your exams, you can have your limits. But you see, the autonomy should not be in one person's hand okay. to determine who becomes a lawyer and who, who do not become a lawyer in this country? And of what 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 basis are they using? And for me, that one is a bit confusing. And and to say that we have people in this country who are being affected by these same issue and cannot stand and speak. Mm -hmm. Quite recently, we saw the teachers yeah. when they were being asked to do their licensing exams. They came out to say that we do not agree with this. They put up. They came out opinion. But you find lawyers who want to speak and they said, I am hiding, I don't want to put my name out and all that. Who should speak for you? Yeah. Okay. I mean, they should be bold. Because when you come out boldly, then we will have people supporting you. But when you keep quiet, then who do you want to come go and fight Thank for? Thank you very much. Adam. Jifa, since the uh, issue about the admissions and uh, entrance examinations of the, the Ghana School of Law came, uh, I have been one person who has been strongly advocating on various platforms for or calling for some reforms okay. and for the GLC to bow down their heads in shame and accept that they are failing this country. Is it their fault that students are failing? It is their test? fault, and I will tell you. When I started, some people thought that maybe I was one of those who wrote the exams and did not pass and all of that. I would wish to be a lawyer, but I haven't even sat in an LLB class before. The, the, the closest I came to was to walk around the University of Ghana Law Is Faculty. Is it because you're afraid you'll be part of the No, 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 no not that, not that. I mean, everybody must have a plan for their lives. I'll read law someday, hopefully. But Benjamin Franklin said something that, for me, should guide all of us okay. on this issue. He said that justice will not be served until those who are unaffected are as outraged as those who are affected. Mm -hmm. I'm not affected, but I must be outraged, even more angrier than those who are affected in this particular issue. Okay. The point is that the 7% pass rate is not because the faculties are not doing well. It is not because the lecturers at the various faculties in the institutions that are teaching the LLB students are not good enough. It is simply a matter of policy. Mm -hmm. And that is where the, G, the GLC, the General Legal Council, comes in. Okay. When you hear utterances from people, respectable people, notable people like the Chief Justice, proudly during the bar conference about a week or two ago, she said as long as she remains in the profession, she will not superintend or supervise the mass production of lawyers. Mm -hmm. And so that kind of thinking is that they think that the only way to preserve the nobility of the profession is to make it very difficult for people to get entry. And for them, that is how to get their respect. Well, you're being measured and by many your merits, right, and your competency. No, no, I'll tell you why it is it's a matter of policy and it is not a matter of merit or intellect. competence, okay. intellect. Again... Others have asked the question as to why the students who have been failed cannot speak. Mm -hmm. And those who even spoke to CTFM yesterday did that on condition of anonymity. Why? What are they afraid of? They are afraid of because one of the conditions for taking the exams, and a lot of Ghanaians don't know this, is that you must accept or sign to the fact that you don't even have the right to contest the results. They didn't have to sign it, did Everywhere they? else, everywhere else in the universities, Everybody has the 
the, the privilege or the right to go for remarking. But in their case, today as we speak, they cannot even do that. Why didn't they in the past, us? in the past, when they were denying them the opportunity, those who failed the exam, those who went for remarking, the outcome was that many of those who went for remarking actually realized that they got higher marks than they were given in the main exams. Mm -hmm. So the, 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 what they have introduced as a matter of policy now is that you even cannot contest the results in any way. So you have to wait and write it again. 128 out of 1,820 is tragic. It is completely disastrous. And if I, we must, as a country, begin to talk about it. Why are we doing this to ourselves? One, they make a very, very ridiculous argument that you cannot do a mass production of lawyers if you want to ensure quality. But who said so? Everywhere in the world, doctors, lawyers, when you want to measure their ratio, so doctor to patient ratio or, uh, and, and, and lawyer to client ratio, let me give you some countries. When you go to a country like Cuba, mm -hmm. there are about 11 million people, mm -hmm. and yet they have about 48,000 lawyers. Mm -hmm. In Ghana, we have about 29 million, and the last research that was done, just about 2,500 lawyers. Mm -hmm. Who said that we cannot produce more lawyers and still ensure quality? Are you aware that most of the magistrate courts that we have in this country, it is lawyers from Accra, Kumasi, and the big cities that go there to do their cases. So usually when you go to court there, the lawyers don't even make appearance because there's a deficit in terms of lawyers. So what is the GLC's business about reducing the numbers and they intentionally put in place these very, very difficult measures to prevent the students from even making it? Thank you very much. We the have reforms, to wrap up for us. The please. reforms are needed and it must be done now. And I think that being led by a president who is a lawyer himself, this is the time for the president to speak on the reforms. Because when you look at the figures, as we speak, 60 people sat for the post call, only 11 were, elect, were, were selected or ad admitted to. When you look at the raw scores that was released, highest mark for those admitted was 67 out of 100. Mm -hmm. Simply because some people feel that let's make it extremely difficult for these innocent and determined students to get access. Most of them are crying and they cannot even speak out. Okay. I think that the GLC must bow down their heads in shame. They are failing us and then they are not living up to expectations. Something must be done about the GLC and the IEC. Thank you very I much. Agree, we do have to move on. And, and Adam. I think that education in this country is a right and not a privilege. Mm. When, we should, when we understand it and we come to accept the fact that it is a right and not a privilege for a selected few, I mean, we will not even entertain the kind of justification the legal counsel is putting out. Mm. We will not for any reason. Because you cannot tell me. And you see, today I'm happy Adam is making that argument that, I mean, the quantity does not necessarily affect the quality. Mm. You know why I'm saying that? No. And he knows. So this argument about so on quantity that note, let us, let affecting us move quality on. has been uh, dealt, the dealt with The president says, work hard, it will reduce poverty. And he's charging world leaders, and this was at the United Nations. So the president, Nadal has urged world leaders to focus their energies on resources, uh, and resources, sorry, on combating poverty as their performance as government will be judged by how successful they are able to reduce and eventually eradicate poverty in their respective countries. And he quotes briefly that um, for us in Africa, poverty is a daily reality that we live with and feel far too many of our people are burdened with it and it robs us of the dignity that should be the inherent right of every human being and he also goes on to say that we know that our performance as governments will be judged by how successful we are in reducing the end eventually eradicating poverty in our country so he's urging uh, leaders of africa to focus on eradicating poverty adam Jifa, and world leaders in general i mean as usual i mean the president very eloquent talks nicely but acts very little or does absolutely nothing. If I, everybody, all of us, development advocates, social commentators, what have you, all of us know that all world leaders, all of us, what is expected of us is that we are working to combat poverty, mm -hmm. disease, and ignorance. These three things are key. 
When there's nothing even, wrong with the person. No, no, I'm not saying that there's anything wrong. That's what I'm saying. That. That's what I'm saying. That there's nothing wrong with it. Mm -hmm. There's nothing, absolutely nothing wrong with, with making the president fine, telling our the president world. telling the world that they should all go and work hard to fight poverty, disease. What, what have you? It's there's an absolute. In fact, we wish we are happy that he has gone to make their statements. But Ghanaians did not elect the president to make fine speeches. He should be able to tell us what he is doing. By example, leadership is by example in this country to combat poverty. What significant steps that he has taken to combat poverty. These are the issues that we should we be speaking to. We have three SHS, right? No, you see, I, I, I don't want to really go back into the whole argument of free SHS. But we're talking about poverty reduction. We all know what are the immediate steps that you take to reduce poverty and make life comfortable for your, for, your, for your country. One, look at the level of hardship in this, in, in, our, in, in this, I mean, the economic hardship that we are facing as a country, to the extent that the president himself came out and admitted that times are hard, but he would work, again, he makes more promises that he will work to fix the problem. So look at the economic hardship. So for example, the already impoverished Ghanaian, you have gone to increase communication service tax to 9% from 6%. Again, fuel prices have been on the rise, fuel price hikes. Against your promise of reducing fuel prices when you were given the opportunity, businesses are collapsing. We all know jobs are being lost. These are the things that are actually contributing to increasing the levels of poverty in your own country. So when you mount the international stage and you want us to believe that you are now a fine advocate for uh, poverty eradication and you make all the fine speeches, it has nothing. We are going to measure your performance by the standard of living in your own country. And that is what we should be judging the president on. So our president is good at making fine speeches, though sometimes the speeches are highly plagiarized. This one, I hope thank you by the end of much, today, Adam. we don't have some thank plagiarism you. in it. But Nana, let's Kwame. measure it by thank performance, you. not you. by thank fine you. speeches. Ask, ask your response to the president. Yeah, sure. Ask call them to, to the show world. us his turn it in report when he was submitting his um, okay. uh, thesis let's, to the University of Ghana Legon. Okay. And then I would show him what is plagiarism. As, okay. as okay. accepted okay. internationally. Okay. Thanks. So let us leave that. Yes. Again, he, he, he said that um, the president talks more but does little. Respond to the president. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 it is important. It is part of it. It is important. It is part of it. You see, to alleviate poverty, mm -hmm. he mentioned some indicators. Let me mm -hmm. use the indicators he mentioned. Mm -hmm. He went by ignorant mm -hmm. and he went by poverty mm -hmm. and he said disease. Mm -hmm. So let me de deal with it. Mm -hmm. When you say ignorant, what does it mean? But somebody don't know. You need to teach the person. Mm -hmm. So you come back to education. The Clear. quality also matters. Uh, that is why before we're ending the legal issue, I raised the quality and the number. Okay. Those okay. variants. I knew this question would come. So shouldn't the president have focused on, on how he on, has hold addressed hold poverty on, in his own country? On. As and the, I mean, we the, all know the, that the poverty president is a did. If you listen to the statement mm -hmm. the president did, he did. What I'm trying to say is that to, to alleviate poverty, mm -hmm. education is key okay. in the and, center. And he talks about And the SHS. president yes. has demonstrated by all standards, none in, the, in Africa, even none in the world. Mm. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. The president has demonstrated we, his, we commitment, have Kwame his commitment. His <laughs> commitment. Uh, no, the Kwame Nkrumah was able to give free SHS to the Nordness, the, 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 the Northern region. No, 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 by the way, oh, but, 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 but this days. is the, you see, that, you see when, you, when you raise this, quality, when you raise you know? this argument, you are defeating. No, no, I'm coming <laughs> when you when, when you raise this, uh, no, no, no. placing yourself in the school, it can't ask to a okay, quality. Okay, that's the point. Okay. Now, okay. so so when you when you do, talk with the talk about education, we've done enough. Yeah. Now, let's go to poverty. When you want to Ten reduce seconds. poverty, mm -hmm. now you have to build the capacity. One, you need to look at agriculture, that is one of the bases in our. Uh, economy. Mm -hmm. Then you look at the industrialization of this whole economy. And in agriculture, supplying local fertilizer. In agriculture, mm -hmm. in agriculture, again, there is fertilizer. an impeccable result. Look at their, uh, 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 what do you call it, uh, sector, uh, 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 the, the sector performance when they were living and now. Look, just in agriculture, the government has ensured that youth in agriculture, as of 2017, he was employing 11,500. And you are calculating it by fertilizer no, distribution. No, no, it's not, it's not about <laughs> fertilizer distribution. You see, when, you want to, when you want to do those arguments, you can no, do it. I'm but I'm, I'm just okay. giving you the fact as it is. Okay.
2018, 2018, 2018 15, no, I'm giving you the fact. You need to know what the president is doing when it comes to alleviating poverty. So you need to know what the president is doing when it comes to alleviating poverty. So you need to administrator of the NPP Youth Wing, and Eric Edem Abanya is the deputy national youth organizer of the NDC. Thank you so much for staying with us. Do not go anywhere. Breakfast Daily will be right back with our DIY segment. Hi guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, The City Tube. For exclusive breakfast daily content and other City TV programs. Like, comment, and share with your friends.